afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. It's an exciting time. This is sort of a first for us at the corporate Zoom headquarters. And we're going to be talking about the health benefits of eating beef. And there are many of them. And you know what, we want to squash a little bit of the misnomers that go with that. But at the same time, I'm excited because we have this opportunity to share with you some really great people. But you know, when it all comes down to it, and you think about the things that we need to substantiate life in itself, uh, we've got to have a good variety of foods. And tonight's session is going to be just absolutely excellent. Uh, we have our super uh, director of clinical research of Market America and our director of Nutrimetrics, who works with thousands of health professionals, Dr. Deidre Mason, who will be joining us. Hello, Dee. Good to see you. Good to be here, Dennis, especially with one of my favorite topics, protein. <laughs> ah, absolutely. Build strong muscles. And you know what? I, I feel this next person that I'm going to introduce is a kindred spirit. And in, um, in basically bringing him on with this introduction, um, uh, Ray Rostelli is the founder of Rostelli's Markets and Beef. And Ray founded Rostelli's in 1976. Um, he first started out as a butcher when he was 19 years old, and he has a great understanding about how bringing the very best product to market has been working for us. And the other thing that I want you to know about Ray is like myself, a fellow musician, Ray was a professional uh, musician and he played piano and keyboards. Uh, so Ray, I'm pretty excited about that, but why I'm really excited, and that's why I wore my Eagles jersey tonight. Um, I just want you to know, you are a legend in Philadelphia when it comes out to tailgating because hundreds of people would gather around Rostelli's tailgating feature because you were grilling some of the best foods on the planet. Ray, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Uh, Dennis, I could not be happier to be here with the whole Market America family, you know, and especially with you and Dr. D. And D, Dr. D and I, you see, coordinated today with colors. But I'm glad you wore your Eagles jersey because you know I am a lifelong Eagles fan, and and I'm old enough to remember you playing Dennis, and uh, that was that was that was really awesome. Oh, uh, listen, I appreciate that, but you are Market America's butcher, and we are so happy to have you. You know, I'm going to turn over to Dr. D, because she has some things that she'd like to bring up, and before we get into the actual presentation itself, it's exciting, because I think this is going to be full of educational nuggets, uh, and how fortunate we are to work with Ristelli's. Dr. D. You guys, I am excited to be here. So thanks again, uh, both Ray and Dennis for the invitation. And one of the reasons why I was excited to be able to do something like this is there are a ton of myths out there about red meat. Everyone has heard from their physician, their aunt, their uncle, everybody's unsolicited advice except for that practitioner. They're supposed to stay away from animal meat, animal protein. And what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about where that comes from and break some myths, right? So there was a, a, a theory decades ago that in eating animal protein, that we were consuming too much, not just animal fat, but more importantly, oxidized fat. And so this saturated fat or this oxidized fat was a problem for us. And what I want people to know is that food preparation matters. And that's why this cooking show is so exciting because the way you prepare food matters so that you can stop oxidation of that fat. In addition to that, there's this theory that saturated fat leads to heart disease. Um, when in fact, oxidative stress and inflammation are the problem. That fat or animal consumption leads to diabetes and other chronic disease. So I've got a couple of myths to bust there. Would you be surprised to know that diabetes is going up? That heart disease, while it hits the plateau, is still the number one death sentence for both men and women. Women don't get cocky because we are catching up with men when it comes to heart disease in the United States. But you know what is not going up? 
In fact, going down is meat consumption, red meat consumption in particular. So there's a corollary there that we need to pay attention to that with meat consumption, that in fact, we're not seeing higher rates of heart disease or type two diabetes or endocrine dysfunction or even obesity. We find that the studies continue to support when you pay attention to how meat is prepared, when you pay attention to how meat is treated, handled, that you get all of the rich, nutrient benefits, the amino acid pool that helps you build those strong muscles. And more importantly, it's those strong muscles that pair next to your bones and say, I'm gonna need you to do the heavy lifting with me. So the amino acid pool that you get from meat is very important. In addition to that, meat, red meat, is very rich in something called heme. And heme is the iron binding for the body. So when we think about energy production, when we think about healthy red blood cells, we think about the benefits of iron that we get from meat. And there are periods in our, in our lives, especially as we age, where we're going to need more of that iron. Now, this is not to say to anybody that you can't have a plant-based diet and have a healthy diet. It just means that you need to pay attention to where that amino acid, where all of those amino acids are coming from. Where are you going to get your B vitamins? Because they are most abundant and rich in things like red meat. Where are you going to get amino acids that are not found in plant food, like methionine and lysine? You're going to need to be selective about how you do it. And that's the important um, component here is when we think about who's eating and who's eating well, it comes down to eating a variety of foods. It comes down to making sure that you're eating food in its natural state, that fat is coming to you in its natural state, that your meat or proteins are coming to you in a natural state and we pay attention to how they're prepared, which is why tonight is exciting for me. That when it comes to vitamins and minerals that we appreciate that red meat is rich in amino acids, it's rich in magnesium, it's rich in B vitamins, it's rich in many of the nutrients that are giving you energy, allowing you to have good muscle retention, not just as you age, but for energy throughout the day. That in fact, it's the pairing of good fiber rich sources of plants and animal products and their natural fats that allow us to have that diversity or that variety in our diet that speaks to our genetic code. It speaks to where we come from as human beings, as hunters and gatherers, and it allows us to live some of the most robust lives full of energy um, that, so that we're able to reach our potential. Thank you, Dee, that was awesome. Now, I also understand you enjoy a good steak every now and then yourself. <laughs> um, what are your favorites when I think about? Well, you know, li listen, the reason why filet, the filet mignon is my favorite. The story is too much to get into tonight, although it is a really fun story. But by and large, the filet, because of the way it's prepared, um, because we really want to hold on to the tenderness of this meat. We want to uh, control for its temperature as we uh, eat um, this meat or as we prepare this meat. And that's ultimately what gives it all of its flavor. So it kind of fits with my health philosophy is that we don't want to add too much heat for too long a period of time. And that's how we protect the meat and keep it healthy. But it also happens to be one of the most flavorful cuts. Oh, second or first and then second in line of course is the ribeye absolutely stellar again we're coming down to how you prepare it means you're going to get to hold on to all of that flavor it's super it's my mouth is watering right now just thinking about what ray's gonna do well it's about time we hear from ray because he's got a lot of great things to share with us perfect and dr d thank you you know you, you you talked about a lot of great things about meat and i heard the word natural, uh, and really it, the, the product coming to you in the most natural state. Now, I want you to remember all the beef and all the meat that Market America works with this deli on, and, and we are really your family, your partner. It's ABF, which means it's antibiotic-free, it's steroid-free, it's hormone-free, and in a lot of cases, it's organic. It's all humanely raised, and what's most important is 
we know where the meat comes from because for 44 years, this is what I've done. So I've created all those relationships in the last 34 years of all of the family members, the family farmers that I've been working with. And what does that mean? That means I trust those family farms to bring me the best product and make sure it is exactly what we give our guests. So I'm, I'm excited to hear that filet mignon is your favorite and ribeye <laughs> second. I'm going to flip it around on you, though, because I'm going to start with my favorite, which is the ribeye. Okay. Rib okay. So I'm going to start with the ribeye. Let me show you kind of how simple it is. And, and what I look and I like about the ribeye is look at the marbling in the ribeye. So if you take a look at all of this beautiful marbling here, that's what gives us our texture and our tenderness. It's also what gives us that beautiful beefy flavor. So it is by far the most flavorful steak of all steaks on the entire steer. So I'm not a cook, remember, I'm just a butcher, but let me show you how simple it is. And when you talked about temperature and being able to keep the juices inside the meat, let me show you how simple it is. And I like things simple, easy, and easy ingredients. So I'm gonna show you three simple ingredients that I use now. You may have your different toppings you want to use. Some people love rubbing coffee on it or rosemary or thyme. I'm a real simple guy. I like to use sea salt. So before I put my seasoning on there, let me show you my little trick. Take some oil, right? Canola oil, vegetable oil. Just spray it, right? I want to coat that ribeye a little bit. Let's get some oil on the outside of it. I'm going to put my sea salt on it. And don't be afraid. Give yourself a generous helping of sea salt. I'm going to use some dried garlic flakes because I'm Italian. I like garlic, and of course, and of course, some beautiful black pepper. Now, I will tell you that seasonings matter. So, if you buy a really great, you're going to have a better result. So, that's simple. We're going to turn it over, and we're going to do the same thing. Remember, a squirrel, right? Because we want to sear that steak. Here's my sea salt. And again, don't be afraid to be generous with it. There's my garlic flakes and some black pepper. So, while I've been doing this. You can probably see my skillet here getting really hot. I like using a cast iron skillet because I want to really sear the steak, right? And I want to get them great grill marks. So this is how simple it is. I've got it really hot. All I'm going to do is take my steak that has been seasoned. Remember, I've got oil on each side of this steak, so it's going to give a good sear. Now, how do I know whether my skillet is hot enough? Take a little bit of water, drop it on, and when you hear that, you know you're ready to go. Take that ribeye and a listen, because a listen is almost as good as a look, right? It is just one. Now, I will tell you, that ribeye is only going to take about four minutes on that side. But what I like to do after two minutes, and I'll show you, I like to just spin it because I like getting grill marks that are crossed. You may like straight grill marks, because remember, cooking should be fun, right? It should be simple, it should be easy. And I love having fun. So whatever your topping is or whatever your seasoning is, you know what? It's up to you. For me, it's simple. Salt, pepper, some garlic. So look at how quickly that is searing. I'm going to actually pick that up. And all I do is turn it 45 degrees this way. So I'll see when, that, when you turn that over, you'll see really what those grill marks look like. And that's the grill marks typically. When you go to a great steakhouse, you know, they give you a come down on the floor, great look. So we're almost ready to flip. And I will tell you that your temperature for a medium rare steak is about 125 degrees. Because remember, when you pull a steak off of the grill, off of the broiler, or whatever you're cooking it, it's going to cook about another 10 degrees, actually. So take a look now if I put this in a little Look at those beautiful grill marks. I've got nice cross-section grill marks, which are just what I really am looking to do because it's not only about eating that steak, but it's also about the presentation. What's it going to look like when I bring it out to my guests? And you know what? I want it to look just like it looked when I went to a great steakhouse. So again, it is just a few minutes on that side as well. So while that's growing, I want to talk to you a little about your filet mignon, Dr. D, because that's a little bit different, right? That steak is a lot thicker steak. So look at the thickness on that steak. But you'll also notice there's not as much marbling inside that steak. This steak is a leaner steak. But it's that muscle on the steer that I say all the time goes along for the ride. It doesn't do anything. And that's why it's so tender all the time. 
It's also an extremely porous, so it takes to a great flavor. Any sauces that you want to use. So the filet, I'm going to do a little bit differently, but our ribeye is going to be ready to come off that grill literally in about another moment. So in preparation for our filet, I've got my oven on at 375 degrees. So I preheat the oven before I start actually seasoning. So the seasoning for the steak is very similar, right? Take my oil, simple spray. I take my salt, real simple on top. I take pepper. So that's all I'm using right now is salt and pepper on this filet. I do the same thing on the other side. A little spray of my oil. And again, I like using a canola oil or vegetable oil oil. You do not need to use a, an olive oil on something like this. There's my salt. There's my pepper. And we're ready to go as far as our seasoning goes. But before we go to that, we're ready to pull the ribeye off, believe it or not. So let's take a look at what that ribeye looks like. Look at how beautiful this steak is. That's, that's the kind of steak that I want to be able to serve my family. And the other thing, a quick, quick thought on cutting your steak. Now, typically, we're going to leave our steak rest for about 10 minutes. because, But today, we don't have 10 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this for you. But a little eating tip, right? And I know everybody knows how to eat, right? But a lot of people I've noticed, they'll take their steak and they'll cut it completely up. And it's ready on the plate. They're going to go ahead and eat. Well, what that does is when you cut that steak into all of those pieces, you let all those juices out. So all those nutrients that we talked about, Dr. D, all that beautiful flavor we talked about, it winds up being on the plate. So the way that I recommend you eat a steak, it's real simple. Just cut the steak in half like this. And I want you to take a look at how beautiful this steak is cooked. This is what I call consider Pittsburgh blue or rare, right? But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off just a piece of steak that I'm going to eat, right? Because I want the juice to stay in the rest of the steak. So as I cut a piece, I eat a piece. I cut a piece, I eat a piece. So the ribeye steak being my favorite because it's incredibly flavorful and incredibly tender. And I will tell you, you're never, ever going to have anything quite as tasty as the ribeye steak. So we're going to move our skillet because the filet is cooked not in the skillet, but in a frying pan on top of that stove that's just flat. And there's a reason for that, because I don't really want grill marks on my filet. I want sear on my filet. So here's how we're going to do this. Remember, I've taken that filet and I've seen it with both sides, right? A little bit of oil, uh, the salt, and the pepper. Grab our tongs back. <clears throat> here's how simple it is now on the filet. We've taken our filet. We've getting our skillet nice and hot, and it's really critical. So high heat, I drop a little bit of oil in there because I really want to get it. Let's see if it's hot enough. Still not quite hot enough. It's getting there. You can hear the bubbling, right? But in about another minute, it's going to be hot, and it's really critical to get hot because what we're going to do with the filet is we're going to sear it. Remember, the filet is really porous. So I want to be able to sear both sides of the filet, and then I'm going to sear actually all the way around the filet. And it will only take about 40 seconds on each side. So let's listen to a sear. That's what we want to hear when we sear a steak, right? We've got that filet being seared on one side. Remember, the handle on your pan has got to be a handle that can go into the oven. So make sure you don't put a rubber handle in your oven. But I've got a metal pan with a metal handle. Because once we're done searing this, we're going to put this in the oven. So let's take a quick look at this. See if we got a sear. We have a sear. Oh, yeah. Look at that. We got a sear. Right now we're going to sear this side. All right. So what does searing do? Searing seals in all the juices on that filet. And we want the juices to stay inside of that filet and not actually cook out of it. So as it is searing here, and again, it's only about 30 seconds on that side as well. <clears throat> All we're going to do is turn it on its side. So you can see how it's seared all the way through. Right, so we're going to sear that side. I'm just continuing to sear. Make sure you've got tongs that are long enough so you don't get burned, right? But we're actually searing that so that there's no more red on the filet. Just keep turning it. Now, 
This is the same thing that they do in those great steakhouses. So when you go to that steakhouse and you pay a crazy number for a filet mignon, this is part of their trick, right? Is they're steering it. They want all those juices to stay inside of that filet. So I'm gonna let that sear for just another minute or two, and then I'm gonna show you the trick that most of the steakhouses use, and that I use too, because again, I'm not a chef, I'm just a cook at home who happens to be a butcher. So we're gonna let that sear for another minute. Remember, my oven has been heated at 375 degrees. So we're gonna take that filet, which is searing. Right? Look at how gorgeous that filet is. And all I'm gonna do is take this over to an oven. Now I have a, a, a commercial oven here, but it works just the same in your regular oven at home at 375 degrees. So I'm gonna take that pan over to the oven, been heated at 375. It's right in the oven. Now, while that is cooking in the oven, let me show you the trick. This is the fun part. And again, I'm a real simple cook. Butter. So take a, take a pat of butter, because we don't need much for one filet, right? And all we're gonna do is garlic. Remember, I'm Italian, so I like garlic. But here, I want fresh minced garlic, right? So I'll put some fresh minced garlic right on top there. And then I'm gonna take some fresh thyme. All I've done is taken some fresh thyme and actually just cut it up, right? Chopped it up nice and fine. What am I doing? I'm making compound butter. And the reason I'm doing that is because remember I told you the filet mignon is really porous, really soft. So look at this, just making this beautiful compound butter that has my thyme, it has my butter, and of course my garlic. This is gonna be, this is, we're gonna to top that filet when it comes out. And what will happen is this compound butter will actually melt right into that filet. I'm gonna put a little more butter on there. And in about another five minutes or so, because it will only take about five to seven minutes in that oven, that filet will be ready to go. So, Dr. D, um, you saw my favorite on my ribeye. Now I'm just doing your favorite, which is the filet. But uh, I wanted to give you that little trick on the butter and the garlics and the herbs. Love it. You know, I'm so glad that we talked about the searing and the keeping those juices in, those nutrients in. Because that's the, that's the key, is enjoying your food, of course, right? And that means we've got to lock in that flavor. But treating it well with that temperature is so important because what you didn't do is steer the inside. We still have a beautiful pink inside to, uh, to these meats. And that's really where that magic of that, that um that flavor comes from, but in addition to that, is one of the things that allows this meat to be healthier because we are not creating any glycation. We're not creating these temperature-related and high oxidative stress components in meat when we control for that temperature. That's the magic. When we look at heart disease, we look at um, issues and health concerns that are related to meat, it's often due to heat processing, chemical handling, the preservatives that are put into food. And those are all things that we control for beautifully with your meat, Ray. And you know, you talk about preservatives. We use one thing to preserve our meat, our packaging. So I want to talk, remember, all of our steaks, our chops, our chicken, come to you frozen. Listen, that's a frozen piece of meat. But what it's in is a vacuum package. And Dr. D, the reason we vacuum package this is because we lock in the freshness. So when we cut this steak, we package it and we blast freeze it. So that's locking in all the freshness, but you know what it's doing? It's keeping out all the bacteria. So this is gonna be in your freezer for up to 12 months without any issues of freezer burn. But this is what I love about this packaging. Here's that same steak, but it's actually defrosted. You can see I can bend it, right? So I pull this out of my freezer. <clears throat> I put it in my refrigerator because I'm gonna cook it tomorrow. And it looks like this after a day. It's, it's soft. Well, if I happen to forget about it or I can't get to it, or for some reason, for the next four or five or eight or nine or 10 days, I don't get to it, it's okay. This is a really special packaging that will keep this product fresh in the package. The other thing, Dr. D, is you can take this package even after it's been sitting in your refrigerator for 10 days. And if you want to refreeze it, put it right back into the freezer. Stop it. Freeze it again. Your packaging allows that? Yes, it allows it. So that's what really, you talk about preservatives, it's just natural preservatives, right? It's the natural freezing process that we use 
with this beautiful packaging. And what that does, it makes it easy for you at home to have something in your freezer all the time. It makes it easy for you to think about what to cook. And if you can't get to it, no fuss. Don't worry about it. If you're in a pinch, and I'm typically in a pinch, and I get home and I forgot to pull a steak out the night before, if you take this and you put this in a bowl of cold water for about 10 minutes in the package, this will be full just like this in literally 10 minutes. So it makes the process really, really simple. It keeps an organic, antibiotic-free product in your freezer with complete shelf life for 12 months, but it makes it easy and simple. And most of all, fun, because food should be fun. You know, Ray, this is just amazing because I see so much waste happening uh, because someone plants, my wife plans a dinner and then all of a sudden plans change. And the next thing you know, the color of the meat is turning a little bit and we can't eat that. This is actually saving me money. This is awesome. I love it. <laughs> God, that's good. Yeah, Dennis, you know, it's a great point. And even, you know, t typically people that, that go to a supermarket and just buy a piece of meat and bring it home, Think about it. You really don't know how long it's been in there. You don't know if it's been aged. Remember, all of our meats age 28 days because that's what the restaurants want. So I want you to get the same restaurant quality we've been serving the restaurants. <clears throat> so for that, that product to be aged, when you go to a supermarket, it's the opposite. They don't want to age it. They want to sell it through within two to three days because of that color change, right? That changes color. So you really don't know how old it is. You don't know where it comes from. You really don't know who the manufacturer is or who the butcher is behind it. Inside of Market America now, you do know that. You've got your butcher, right? And I've got all of the farms that are that are that are part of our association. So we deal directly with these small family farmers. The product comes directly to us. We age it, we cut it, we package it. So you are getting what the best steakhouses in the country get. Bar none. And you're getting it with an aged packaged product that just is not out there for the masses, but it is here for Market America. And we know in the times that we're in. And if some stores have meat and some stores don't, you will always have meat at Market America, no matter what the circumstances are, because Stelly's is your butcher. That's amazing. You know what? I, I'm just sitting here thinking about the passion that you're bringing out. Uh, it is just so important for just the recognition of the joy that you get in working with what you're so passionately about. It's, it's great, right? So, this is super exciting. Go, go ahead, Ray. No, go ahead, Dr. J. We've got another No, minute. I was just going to say, it's so exciting. Because here I'm, I'm, I've got this, like, ready supply, this perfectly aged, and aging, aging while I get to keep it, which is amazing. It's just going to keep aging in that package, which is brilliant because of what you just described, right? Not only do I have a, a, a steady supply of this incredible meat, uh, it's grass-fed, as you said, it's non-GMO. We are looking at some of, I, I know you mentioned the restaurants, and while I think that's fantastic, I, when, it, when it hits home, it's about family, right? And we want to be able to feed our families the very best. Um, I've learned some things today I didn't know that I'm ridiculously excited about, including the trick of refreezing this food. Yeah, it really does make it simple. So we've been in the oven now for probably close to five minutes. Um, I, again, when I pull that steak out of the oven, remember, it's going to actually rest and it's going to take a few minutes. But the trick at that point, when it's good and hot, I'm going to actually put that compound butter on top. So that's what's going to give me that flavor. So let's take a look. Nice. You know, now I got to go back, D, to the days of the training table and why they fed so much beef on the training tables. It's to build the great muscles and also getting that high quality that you're getting. When you think about, it's about performance, it's about your body and the way that it all works. I mean, it's just tremendous that we have access to this quality of beef and, you know, just to learn about this. I mean, not very many people get this up close and personal look and what's going on on that. So it's really good. And, and let me just say this to you, uh, explain again to me, D. So I'm, I like the barbecue in the back, uh, <laughs> you know, so I like to see the lines on the, the beef. And, and so tell me what, how much can I barbecue? <laughs> so you're not supposed to barbecue. I'll tell you that, but here's the thing. There are ways you can control for this. So there is something called an advanced glycation end product. And what this is, is when proteins and sugars or um, sugars and fat bind together. And that's ultimately 
why beef or red meat got such a bad rap is because of the way it was ultimately prepared. Um, sugar, like think about barbecue, that, that barbecue sauce goes on there. And now what I'm doing is I'm mixing that meat with the sugary sauce, right? And I don't wanna cook under heat on that sugary sauce into that meat because that's where the harm happens. But if you can do dry rubs, if you can control for the heat and that very high heat for a short period of time, and that's why that searing is so fantastic. It's not just a sexy sound it makes in that pan, right? Like that good stuff. Um, so that you're controlling um, for um, some of the health concerns that people have when you short bursts of high heat, um, or if you've got to barbecue, you want to do that slow cooking barbecue and you want to do the dry rubs. And if you want to add in your barbecue sauces, you're just doing them on the side. And that's how right. you keep this healthy for you because it's actually the sugar and the fat and the protein that lead to that oxidative damage and harm to us. Okay, let me go back and ask Ray here for a minute. Ray, you heated up the pan and, uh, you know, you put it on high heat. That's just what you do. And then it's the water test. And if it's like turning into steam, it's ready to roll. That's it. It's simple. When, it's, when, it's, when you hear that bubbling right off of that frying pan, it is ready to be seared. And you, you heard that when I seared it. Now, I want you to look at this filet because one thing I want, to know, I want you to notice is the filet doesn't have any fat. So you don't see any fat in the pan either, right? What you're seeing is my compound butter that has been melting on top for the past couple, for the past minute and a half or so. And, and again, um, the flay is so soft, it takes the temperature, it takes to that searing, blocks in all of that flavor because, and, and, and the juices, because remember, because it is such a soft piece of meat, if we cook it very slowly, all of that juices and nutrients and flavor actually cook out of that steak. So searing is like stealing, right? It steals the outside, the perimeter of that steak. So you'll see your steak when it comes out of your oven, it actually looks like it plumps because it does. It actually begins to cook from the inside out. So when, when you cook the steak at home on the grill and you don't typically get that same great steak flavor that you got at the great steakhouse, that's why. This little trick I showed you today by searing on the frying pan and then actually pulling out and putting into your oven at 375 for about five to seven minutes. Let's take a look at what you've got here. Now, I like a, I, as Dr. D mentioned, I like a really rare steak. So, um, because again, I want to taste the flavor. I want to see the nutrients. And let's see really what we've got here when we cut the steak open. Oh, the only thing you guys are missing is the smell because the smell <laughs> is absolutely incredible. So take a look at this. Steak. Wow. Uh, you could see close up, you would see all the juices coming out of it. You would just, again, you're missing the smell. So when we can figure out how to get you to smell this, you're really going to do a great deal. <laughs> D, let's go over. Uh, we'll be right over I, there, right? We'll be right over. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. You know, uh, I've had the pleasure of ordering your, uh, your steaks and I'll tell you what, the fillets and the ribeyes have been just fantastic and what we've been able to get uh, delivered to our doorstep. Uh, and the packaging explanation today was super enlightening uh, from a safety standpoint. Dee, you mentioned that. I mean, the vacuum seal is just amazing. Uh, and what I've learned, that it's a big help. Yeah, I mean, and I'm, you know, you, we joke about me being a meat eater because I want to make sure that I have healthy muscle and healthy brain as I age. I want to make sure that I can uh, continue to have healthy uh, bone mineral density. All of those reasons are the health reasons why I do it. But I'm so glad that we talked about flavor today um, because it's not, I mean, there's fantastic flavor in the meats and we're getting that restaurant quality. But something else that I think we don't talk enough about Right, or we haven't spoken about enough today is the, um, the variety of the Ristelli packages. I mean, I just ordered again today, and the fun part about this, if I can spin a wheel and get something completely brilliant, uh, there's all kinds of different varieties I'm having delivered. So sometimes I'm doing the Telgator variety pack, and sometimes I'm doing the Millionaire pack. It's so fantastic to see the variety. So. Um, especially when we think about having food delivered, we want to think about all of these fun ways to start creating 
meals for our families. And Roselli's allowed me to do that, find a bunch of different ways to cook food. You know, D, you, you hit that right on the head. Go ahead, Ray. Uh, you know, I, I was going to say, um, you know, you, you, you started off a little bit, Dennis, talking about food safety. And I'm going to tell you that food safety is the most important thing of what we've done for the last 45 years. It's wonderful to cook a steak. It's wonderful. Look at when I can cut a steak with a fork. Isn't that what we want? Don't we want to be able to cut our steak with a fork just like I'm doing here? Uh, you can do yeah. that if you've got to start with the right steak and if you prepare it right. But food safety is so critical. In today's environment, we want to make sure we lock in the freshness, keep out the bacteria. We want to make sure we know where our food's coming from. We want to understand where the farmers are. And you want to be able to trust the source of your food. So there's a reason we've been here for 44 years, because we have a simple saying here at our butcher shop. If we wouldn't give it to our mom, let's not give it to our guests. It's as simple as that. We're really excited to be part of Market America and, and be part of the family. I, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed being with you and Dr. D tonight. Dr. D, you gave me some really great insight on, on the health attributes of beef. I've always loved beef because I love the way it tastes. Now I love it even more because of the health attributes you gave me. Good deal. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I have to say one other thing, um, Ray. You know, I've had, I've bought most of everything you sell. I, I've been a fan since I've been in Philadelphia. You're a legend in the greater Philadelphia area. I'm most excited that more and more of our unfranchised owners are embracing this and now sharing this with their customers. But I have to tell you, now that I've tried your different packs, I'm now going for the Gusco. I'm buying like 10 pounds of ground meat at a time. I'm buying 10, 15 steaks at a time, ribeyes, uh, because I know the consistency of what's happening. And you know, the flavor, uh, you know, and everything that we've experienced, now that you've shared even cooking it better, uh, I hope we can do more of this with the different things that you offer. Yeah, I, you know, and we, Dennis, from day one when we started, uh, we started with just a few packages. Uh, when I came to the conference, um, we were able to introduce more packages. This pandemic that we all had to go through put an incredible stress and strain, I think, on everyone's business. So we really have tried to put out those stock up and save packages so that you can get that product in your freezer. You can have it there when you want to do it. We're getting back to normal. You know, I, I'm hoping. We've been very fortunate. I will tell you that um, we can't thank enough all the first responders and the people who, but you know what? I can't thank enough the butchers in the back, um, the people at the grocery counters, the people who are making sure that we've got food on our table every single day. So I'm really proud to be part of that whole team here. And, um, and that's why I'm coming to you today, today from the butcher shop. This is the kitchen of the butcher shop because we have about 235 butchers back there right now, still cutting product. And we are doing that two shifts, six days a week to make sure we fill the orders. Gosh, thank you so much. That is just so impressive, Ray. Uh, I don't know about you, D. I thought this was absolutely a great time. Uh, Ray, would you come back if we invite you back to take some more recipes on, on different things that you, you offer? I would love to share that. Remember, I'm not a cook. I'm not a chef. I'm just a cook, right? I'm a butcher, but I've been cooking for a long time. Remember, I like to keep it simple, easy, as few ingredients, and natural as could be. So I'd be glad to share all those tips because food should be fun, right? And we are what we eat. So when we talk about a product being antibiotic-free, steroid-free, hormone-free, healthy for you, let's make sure the ingredients we put in our body are just as good as that. I love it. Great. D, final comments for you? I just want to make sure that people understand the benefits of high quality meat and the difference um, in that high quality meat to the meats you've been told to avoid. That meat is rich in amino acids to build strong muscle and to support healthy aging, including aging of your brains and your bones. It is so important from a bone brain balance standpoint that we get a sufficient amount of protein. And that means paying attention to eating food in its natural state. And that's exactly what Ray has given us the ability to do. Thanks, T. And, and one other thing is what he's given us the ability to do is provide such great products to our doorstep and support our unfranchise owners, the entrepreneurial move to have a product line that has 22% uh, internet business volume, as well as if you're going on auto ship as high as 
percent yeah. with these products. Um, again, Ray, thank you so much for everything you've brought to the table. This is the beginning. Uh, the relationship with Market America, you are Market America's butcher, and we want to keep you right at front and center. Um, oh, thank you so much, Dennis and Dr. G. I'm, I am looking forward to it. Really love being part of the family. All right, then. Uh, let's see. I think that would be it. That's a wrap. Thank for you, us. everyone. Thank you, everyone.